Hello friends, welcome to Garnier Creekside. I am Jenny and I am up here at the new production greenhouse that we are constructing. And I wanted to give you just an update on both this project and the patio project. So stay tuned for both of those updates. Now, as I said, I am up here at the production greenhouse. If you will remember, we have visited this place many times before this season. In fact, we have a whole playlist of just building the greenhouse. So if you missed any of those steps, um, check out the description below. I'll have those videos linked. Last time we were here was just not even a week ago um, and where we had gone through and gotten all of the metal framing up for the greenhouse. Again, check out that video below because it was um, a lot of work that we got done in about three and a half days. It was a total of myself and Jerry and Andrew for most of it. Then Sarah came and helped. Anyway, so we did a lot of work in those three and a half days. What has happened since then, as you can tell the most obvious behind me, is the wood framing for both the front and the back of the greenhouse. Remember, this is going to be a 30 foot wide, 72 foot long greenhouse that is the same exact same shape and size as the one that is right here behind me. Um, it's funny because everybody says that they think that the new one looks like it's going to be bigger, it's taller, but it's not. I mean, it does look bigger, but it's not. It's the same size as the one we already have. Now, again, this, came, this whole greenhouse came as a kit, so it's all together. The only thing that we have to supply as far as the kit goes is the lumber for the end walls. This greenhouse will have a eight foot sliding barn door for lack of a better word. And you can see that that is the opening right there behind me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the camera around and just kind of show you what Jerry and Andrew have done just today. In fact, they're, they're back there working on the back side of the greenhouse. So let me flip the camera around for you. All right, so now you can see the whole thing all together. They have constructed this wooden frame that will house obviously the eight foot rolling door on both the front and the back will have the same one and they do have some more structural um, support to do as far as adding a little bit more of the bracing to go but basically they used a bunch of two by fours it looks like these main posts uh, either a four by four or six by six. I'm not sure, didn't ask Jerry. Um, but that opening, I know he did use a 16 um, foot long boards as far as what's holding up and will house the barn door. So right here is the opening for the sliding door. Obviously they still have to add the track. And like I said, some more framing support, but this is the main system of that Front of the greenhouse. Other than the door, everything is going to be covered in plastic. So if you come and look next door right here, this greenhouse is different because it has a 16 foot door that rolls up. So you can see that there is the handle right there, the 16 foot door. And then again, there is an entry door right off there to the side. The new greenhouse will not have that because it'll be a sliding door so it'll be easy to get into, but you can see how it's just covered in a single layer of plastic. People have been asking, we are using a six milliliter um, weight of plastic, and so we will use that on the same one over here. So the fellers are back there in the back. Jerry has dug all the holes for um, the post using the bobcat with the auger. Just makes life so much easier. So they're getting ready to put up the framing back there. Once they get all the information, all the, um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of the words, all the extra support over here, they will go ahead and add the track for the wiggle wire. So let's look at that. We've talked about this a little bit before, that wiggle wire is a great invention. And what it is, this is what we call the wiggle wire. So there is a metal track that's actually underneath the plastic that you can see here, that, that's what it is. And so that of course is screwed directly on to both the wood frame and the metal frame on the face of the greenhouse. Then wiggle wire is this great 
wire right here that Jerry weaves in and out down the whole length of that track and that is what holds in and secures the plastic to the greenhouse. So they will come over here to the new greenhouse and actually add those tracks whoop, right here along the length of the metal and then all throughout also the wood frame. So that just kind of holds in the plastic really nicely and makes things simple. Also what they did, again, this was one of those things where you think, oh, well, this will just take you know, a little bit of time to do and it took them the whole day. So I'm going to show you what it is and that is that track right there. And that runs the whole length of the greenhouse on both sides. This is a close up of just a little section that they had cut off so I can show you. This is the track that runs, like I said, the whole length of the greenhouse on both sides. So this was a whole process that it took them Jerry and Andrew the whole day to put up for a couple of reasons. One, again, it has to be exactly level throughout the whole greenhouse because remember, these are going to be automated roll up sides up and down. So, with the machinery, you have to have make sure that it's exactly level so that you're not wearing and tearing your um, motors too fast. So, one, it had to be perfectly level. Two, they first had to come through, and on the back of here, you see that track in the middle. They had to make the mark on all the bows, line up this middle track to that, take it back down. Then they had to go ahead and pre-drill holes into the bows, put it back up. Then they went ahead and put a, um, had to put a screw through it. And then on the back side of it, I can show you here in a minute, on each of the bows, there's a clamp with two more screws. Then there's a self-tapping screw through the middle of that. So there was a total of two, four, I think four screws total, five times they had to screw or drill to get that hole in. So, and that was on every single bow. And that's a lot of work. So it just was a very slow and tedious process, but it will help and make things so much easier in the long run because what this thing is designed to do is, this one track will secure both the roof plastic of the greenhouse and the um, curtain of the greenhouse. So on this bottom one down here, this is where that wiggle wire track will go in to hold the curtains in. So they'll, we'll have the fabric for the curtains, then we'll use wiggle wire. So that will be housed down here. And then up here on the top part is where will be another piece that will snap onto this. And that is where the roof plastic will cinch down into. So this one track actually holds two pieces of flat, well actually more than three pieces of plastic because the roof is a double layer and then the curtain for the, um, the sides. So again, it was a very tedious process, but a very important process that will help later make our life a little bit easier. They're still working. We're gonna kind of leave them alone. Um, we're supposed to get maybe some snow tonight into tomorrow. Very excited about that. Next step on this is once they get all of the bracing in and then the wiggle wire track all around, then we'll be ready for plastic. We were kind of hoping that we would be able to do the plastic on today is Thursday. We were hoping maybe we could get it up on Saturday. Not sure that that's gonna happen because they still have a good bit of work to do and then laying that track on the outside of the faces of the greenhouse. It is kind of, again, another tedious process um, so I don't know if that's going to happen. So now let's go back down to the house and we can get a little patio project update because we got some new stone delivered yesterday for the seating wall and we have got it laid out and it's, it's exciting. I'm very excited about it. So let's go take a look at that. Alrighty, here we are at the patio and you can see behind me there is a little bit of a beginning of a seating wall. It's so much fun. Um, I now have a camera person because Emily is filming me. She was out running errands for me. I tell you, those of you parents who have kids who are somewhere near their driving license age, it's fantastic. It's a little scary, but it's also great because they can go do things for you. So now I have a camera lady. So we're going to come over here. Obviously, okay. 
fire pit is right here, clearly. And then the whole idea with the seating wall is that we want to have it in a curve, kind of a half circle behind the fire pit. And then on the side, the fire pit where Emily is standing, we'll have a couple of chairs, a little table, that kind of thing around the fire pit to sit. But the seating wall, obviously the main purpose of the seating wall is to provide additional seating for folks. And then to just to give some structure and some definition to this area, because of course it's just open there to our backyard. So the whole idea with the seating wall is that it is curved. Now it's not in the exact final position yet and the stones aren't perfectly how they are going to be in the final wall but Jerry just went ahead yesterday and was laying these out so that we could have an idea of where they are. They're about mm, five feet, four feet, four to five feet away from the fire pit. This is going to be the same stone for the seating wall that we did for the fire pit. This is the Weston from Belgard. Um, it's really nice. It can have just the rectangular pieces but it also has the modular pieces. Modular just simply means that they are angled on the sides, so that way you can create curves with them without having to cut it. Because if originally we were going to use the stones that we are using for our walls for the seating wall, but then we realized how many cuts we were gonna have to do of that stone, and we were like, mm, yeah, no thank you. So we went with the Weston, so no cutting, just a nice, um, you just have to finagle the stones a little bit to give you that curve. So it will be approximately, uh, um, probably, you know, that nice seating height. And then on the ends, of course, then we'll have caps on them. So we'll have that finished cap on top so you won't see all the little lines. And then on the ends of the seating wall, we'll have two of them. Again, this is really crudely put out here. We will have, um, a perfect square right here and that will be for columns so we will have a column on both ends of the seating wall and then so let's say the seating wall comes up to about right here then maybe the column comes up about this distance so not a massive huge difference but just to give some weight and anchor this wall here and then um, we've got these gorgeous two um, square caps are going to go on top of there. We'll show you those in just a minute. I'm still debating on whether I want to get a planter from Unique Stone and put on that cap so we can have lots of gorgeous flowers there. Or I know I want somewhere in this space to have some of the pineapple finials from Unique Stone because for those of you maybe that are not from the south, the pineapple is a sign of hospitality in the southern home. So we have to have some pineapples somewhere in this patio area um, just to signify we welcome you welcome to our southern garden and our southern patio so that is the outline pretty much of the wall of course once we build it we will take you with you will come with us step by step for that whole process um, but again behind this we'll have some some sort of stone and then we'll have a planting bed back here full of white hydrangeas super super excited about that so let's come on over here and i do want to show you these two caps because they're just so pretty um, and just ignore all of the hot mess that is currently going on we used to have chickens and this was our chicken coop this is going to get completely redone so just know that this is a work in progress all right so Right here are those two caps. They are of the same color, but of course, since it is a stone, they do have some variation in them. So this one has a little bit more of the brown with a little bit, there is some gray and some blue in there. And then this one has a little bit more of that gray, but then again, it has that same brown, orangey, reddish color in it. And this will all go perfectly with our um, columns there over at the patio. Our neighbors are doing construction too, so I mean it is just an absolute construction zone over here, but you can see from this angle just 
how much of the construction zone it is and we are just so ready to get this patio wrapped up so that we can start to enjoy it this spring as always we will keep you updated on both the greenhouse and the patio those are our two major major projects going on right now um, so anyway yeah lots of fun things happening again hopefully we're supposed to get some snow tonight we're super excited about that it definitely feels like it's cold enough my little hands are freezing but anyway, um, and if you have not already subscribed to Gardening with Creekside, please do that. So subscribe to Gardening with Creekside and make sure that you turn on your notifications. That's that little bell right underneath the video. Click on that. That way, when we post a video, you'll get notified that we have posted a new video. So that way you don't miss out on any of the fun things happening here at Gardening with Creekside. As always, thank you so much. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye, friends.